And one day, walking around inside the camp, I see this girl coming down the road. And then she stopped and she grabbed in the handbag and she threw, threw an apple over, the, over all these fences. She, maybe she's coming back the next morning. I better get ready for her. So I wrote a little note um, on it asking her if she could help me to make contact with my family. And as sure as hell she comes down, comes down the road again, just about the same time. But this time I was ready. So she, she saw me standing there and she waved. And I threw the stone. The next time she came down the fence, this is now on the weekend, and I look up and there she comes down the road with an older couple and a little boy and a few other people. I'm Patricia, this is my mom, and this is my dad, and so on and so on. By that time the guards were coming. Oh my God, you should, I mean, this was a high security camp. Two wires with a walkway in between, dogs. If you come within three feet, you get shot. And the father, now just think of this, he said, uh, can you come over tonight? And I said, yes, sir, me, yes, sir, in a high security camp. I said, yes, I gave a promise. I have to get out of this. There's no chance, no way you're going to do it. Well, 40 guys spent a few hours figuring. There were 40 brains working on how do we get this guy out of the camp. A lot of guys around. God standing around said, what's going on? Why do I have to come to the gate? And then suddenly they opened and there was Patricia. He listened after the story. This British commandant organized, dressed me so that I could get out of the camp and got, the, um, uh, got into the hut on the beach, given my word of honor. I'll be back the next morning. Will we still be there? And they picked me up. And in that time, we both of us, after having spent the night together, we found two little stones. She had hers, I had mine. We never met again. Her father had worked in the U.S. during the war. He was an engineer and so on. So then we went back to the U.S. and I was going to be released. Uh, then I started to work on the farm and so on. So, um, we actually lost contact with one another. I remember coming home, and the phone rings, and um, the girl's voice there, hi Mark, uh, uh, this is Patricia, and I said, come on. She says, no, I'm Patricia. And I, I was stunned. Is that you, Pat? Yes. Mark, and then I was, I was just stunned. And then she said, do you know what she said? Do you still have your little stone? I had my little stone. I had carried that stone with me throughout all these years. And I saw her standing there on the airport when I came off the plane. My heart tell, told me where, where it had been all these years here. Yeah. I've been a liar all my life, really. Together with two women, having been married, having a family, and I was carrying the stone with me all the time. Always. When, when she died, I said to her, I, I, I wrote down, talked to the brother and the church, and I said, would you please, you're going to be buried, and you bury her next to her husband, etc." put the little box with the two stones into her hands and bury them with her. Um, I'm getting emotional now. Um, they said uh, they couldn't do that. They told me to save the stones and take them with me when I meet her next time. I have the stones here right there on the table. I'll have him with me. <laughs>